Hollywood, California, the makers of old gold cigarettes present the Comedy Theater. The only radio program that brings you every week the greatest stars in the greatest comedies. Tonight's play, The Nervous Wreck, starring Jack Haley with Martha O'Driscoll. And here is the director of the Old Gold Comedy Theater, Mr. Harold Lloyd. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Nervous Wreck was first done as a Broadway play. It was then made into a motion picture whoopee, and very little of the original play was left. Last year, another version of The Nervous Wreck was made into a picture called Up in Arms. Again, very little of the original play was left. Tonight on the Old Gold Comedy Theater, we present the radio version of The Little That Was Left. <laughs> <laughs> and The Nervous Wreck is certainly a fine, descriptive phrase for Henry Smith, who believes he has every known ailment and several unknown to science. Henry not only supports his mother, but a score of doctors, and has every medicine of every type that has ever come into a jar or a box. As our scene opens, it is early morning, and Henry is awakened by a knocking on his door. Oh, uh, who is it? It's your mother, Henry. It's time to get up. You know, this is a very important day in your life. I know. Come in, mother. What time is it, Mom? Well, it's five o'clock. Your appointment is for six. You'd better hurry and get dressed. I just have to get washed. I'm already dressed. <laughs> well, Henry, did you go to bed with your clothes on again last night? Yes, Mom. I wanted to be sure that I was dressed warmly because it was very damp. Oh, so that's why you're wearing your rubbers. <laughs> How's the weather this morning, Mom? <laughs> oh, it's beautiful this morning, darling. The sun is shining and it's going to be very hot. I imagine the temperature will be around, say, 100. Oh, well, in that case, I'll only wear two sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go and get your breakfast ready, Henry. And good luck on your appointment this morning. Thanks, Mom. Well, I guess I better get washed. I do hope that everything turns out okay. With all my illnesses, I hope I'll pass my physical at the draft board. All right, men. Answer to your name. Smith, Albert. Here. Smith, Frank. Here. <laughs> Smith, Henry. Coming, doctor. <laughs> All right, Henry, are you ready for your examination? Yes, sir, but I really don't need an examination. I know exactly what's wrong with me. Since childhood, I've been afflicted with neuritis, arthritis, dyspepsia, pink eye, and... Oh, <clears throat> God bless you. I got hay fever, too. <laughs> By the way, Smith, I noticed that you've taken everything off but your shoes. Why didn't you take them off? What, and get athlete's foot? <laughs> all right, Smith, go to room 44. But, Doctor, I haven't told you all my ailments yet. We close at 6 o'clock. I haven't got the time. <laughs> room 44. Ah, uh, here it is. Guess I need glasses, too. <laughs> All right, Jones. Put your left leg up. That's fine. Now put your right leg up. <laughs> I still think it can be done. <laughs> Step down. <clears throat> All right, Henry Smith. Uh, right here, Doctor. My, my, what a fine-looking specimen. Thank you, sir. I was talking about Jones, the man that just left. Oh. <laughs> Doctor, can I at least have a sheet over me? I'm freezing. You don't speak until you're spoken to. Sit down. On that marble bench? You <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, <clears throat> now, I want to test your lungs. Now, uh, just let me put this stethoscope on your chest. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Now I want you to breathe deeply. <laughs> fine, fine. Now, 
Now exhale. Hmm. <laughs> you are alive, aren't you? <laughs> yes, sir. Now, now I want you to flex your muscles. They're already flexed. Son, if you've got any muscles, they must be on the inside of the bone. <laughs> All right, Smith, room 45, that door right down there. Yes, sir. Hand me that form, son. Here you are, sir. Um, lungs okay, reflexes okay, heart okay. Congratulations, son, you're in fine shape. Doctor, those charts can't be right. I'm a very sick man, and I know all about my illnesses. I diagnose myself. Oh, trying to take money away from doctors, huh? <laughs> Practicing without a license. I'm sorry, doctor. Oh, you're sorry that I'm a doctor. I should have been a quest. <laughs> I suppose I should treat people without knowing how. Oh, no, you shouldn't treat oh, people Oh, I without... shouldn't treat them. I should let people suffer, huh? <laughs> Go ahead, say it. I'm not even a good doctor. But you're a wonderful doctor. Oh, now you want me to be conceited. <laughs> I shouldn't bother studying anymore. I suppose I know it all now. No, no, you should keep on studying. Oh, I'm just a beginner. I suppose I shouldn't have been a doctor in the first place, huh? Doctors are no good. Oh, no. Doctoring is a wonderful profession. Wonderful profession, huh? People phoning me, ringing my doorbell all hours of the day and night, dragging me out of my house, leaving my poor, darling wife all alone. That's good, huh? Oh, no. You should stay home. You shouldn't leave your wife. Oh, I should stay home and look at that ugly old witch all night, huh? <laughs> Come on, Henry Smith, come out with it. Say it. My wife is a miserable old hag. Kissing her makes you sick. That's not true. Kissing your wife is a pleasure. <laughs> oh, so you're the guy, huh? <laughs> Fine. I hope you're satisfied. You didn't come here for a physical examination at all. You came here to argue oh, with no, me, doctor. to break up my home, no, to doctor. come between me and but my doctor. wife. You need no, a psychiatrist. Go on in there and see the psychiatrist. But my life is ruined. Doctor. My family broken up. All because the moron comes in and makes a cup. That doctor needs a doctor. <laughs> yeah, come in. Doctor, are you the psychiatrist? Yes, I am. Well, I'm certainly glad to see you. Well, that's fine, Henry. How do you feel about going into the Army? Well, I don't want you to think I'm trying to avoid the draft. If my country needs me, I'll be, I'll be ready to shoulder a gun. But I think you should know there are many things wrong with me. Such as? Well, when it comes to placing a gun on my shoulders, that's very difficult. I have neuritis in both shoulders. Is that so? Yes, and of course, when it comes to pulling the trigger... Well, I've got rheumatism in both index fingers. Oh. And I, I really couldn't march, sir, because I have fallen arches and flat feet. Well, son, the Army isn't all marching. We have a motorized service uh, where you sit down. Well, sir, when it comes to... Uh, 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 never mind. Uh, I'm, just, uh, I'm just wondering, son, whether or not you're suitable timber for our Army. What do you mean I'm not suitable timber? I want to fight. I want to get in the war. I want to go uh, ahead and... Uh, uh, son, uh, do you always fly into those uncontrollable rages? Uh, uh, yes. All my life I've been like that. Well, I have a little remedy for this. Whenever you feel any of those rages coming on, just say three little words. Temper, temper, temper. Temper, temper, temper. Yes. Oh. It always works. Now, Smith, I'll have to consider your classification further. In the meantime, get dressed and go home. Yours is a very peculiar case. There you go again. What do you mean, mine's a very peculiar case? I'll have you know that. Temper, temper, temper. Well, how'd you make out, Smith? I don't know. They haven't been able to find a classification for me. How about you? I'm 1A. And boy, I can hardly wait to get my uniform. Oh. <laughs> what a lucky guy. Oh, there comes my bus now. Hey, bus! Bus! If you don't mind, mister, I... I beg your pardon? Oh, I should have known that women were driving buses. 
Miss, can you let me off at Central and Monroe? I'm sorry, I'm not stopping at Central and Monroe. Oh, this must be an express. Well, not exactly. You see, it's a private bus. I'm going to my father's guest ranch, the Lonesome Mule. Well, I really don't want to go to any ranch. Oh, nonsense. This is a health ranch. Why, you spend a couple of days at the Lonesome Mule and you'll feel like a new man. I will? Why, yes. In the immediate vicinity of the ranch, we have more than 20 of the world's most famous doctors. 20 doctors? Uh Uh-huh. That must be a wonderful place. I'll try it for a few days. I can see myself now. My lungs full of fresh air. My muscles hard as a rock. A glow of health all over me. Uh, just do me one favor, please. What's that? Uh, stop at the nearest drugstore. I want to get a medicine kit. <laughs> Now here's Bob Williams with something of interest to all cigarette smokers. Friends, the cellophane wrapper used all winter on old gold packages has been removed for the warm weather ahead. During this summer, and for the first time since the beginning of the war, old golds again have the special protection of aluminum foil. And that's important, for it means that old gold's unique blend of many great tobaccos, including its touch of rare imported Latakia tobacco for extra flavor, is now doubly protected. Protected by aluminum foil and by the special moisture protecting agent we call apple honey. Made from the juice of fresh apples, it actually helps prevent cigarette dryness. Yes, the grand fragrant aroma and swell taste of old gold have all this protection so you'll have your full quota of smoking enjoyment. So keep asking for old gold. Enjoy this finer tasting cigarette. And now back to Harold Lloyd and the second act of tonight's Old Gold Comedy Theater presentation, The Nervous Wreck, starring Jack Haley with Martha O'Driscoll. All right, Mr. Lloyd. So, with his medicine kit under his arm, Henry Smith is now comfortably settled at the Lonesome Mule Ranch. (laughs) He has just finished a lunch of vitamin pills and is now sitting in the sun parlor, making light conversation with the young lady who drove him there. And then after I left Vienna, I went to Paris. Paris? Did you visit Fontainebleau? No, but I saw Kranzenfester. He's the best man in the world for chill blames. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, I went to Istanbul, Budapest, Moscow, and the doctors all told me the same thing. That there was nothing wrong with me physically. It's all in my mind. Well, Henry, maybe they're right. You see, when a man lives alone, why, he has too much time with his thoughts. Oh, but I don't live alone. I live with my mother. No, I... I mean a young girl. Uh, someone who cares for you. Oh, no. Who'd want to marry me? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You're attractive. I am. You've got a fine build. I have? And a very pleasing personality. Really? Oh, yes. I should think any girl would be proud to be your wife. Oh, gosh. Hello, Sally. Oh, I didn't know you had company. I'm Bob Davis, room 14. Who are you? I'm room 29. I mean, uh, (laughs) Henry Smith. Henry, Mr. Davis has been a guest here for quite a few weeks. Yes, and I'm hoping to stay quite a while longer. You see, I sort of have a crush on Sally. Well, Sally, how about tonight? Do we want to take that moonlight ride? No, thanks, Mr. Davis. I'd I'd rather not. You're not going to stand me up, are you? Let's not discuss it. I've I've decided I don't want to go. Now, see here, baby. uh... Mr. Davis, take your hands off me. Mr. Davis, it's quite evident that Miss Sally here does not wish to go out with you tonight. I must ask you to desist in your unwanted attentions. <laughs> Why don't you go away before I sneeze and flatten you? Don't you dare strike him, Mr. Davis. Henry's a very sick man. Yeah, he does look like a talent scout for Forest Lawn. <laughs> I warn you, Mr. Davis, you're vexing me. I'll give you a chance to apologize, and I warn you if you don't... Why, you little runt, Mm. I could knock you over with a wet cornflake. Gentlemen, please. (laughs) Temper, temper, Tom. I'm trying to keep myself in check. I'm just repeating what the psychiatrist told me. Why, you little... Temper, temper, you asked for it. (laughs) I guess I said it too fast. Henry, you knocked Bob Davis out. Did I? I mean, I did? Why, I never would have believed it. I don't know my own strength. 
Oh, but look at your hand, Henry. It's bleeding. Stop it, quick. I can't afford to lose any blood. <laughs> Besides, you see, I'm shaving tonight. <laughs> Put your hand in my coat pocket, the right one. The right coat pocket? Yes, I always carry a package of Band-Aids there. All right. Oh, there it is. Let me put the bandage around your knuckles Oh, thanks Gosh, Sally I've known you only one day And it seems as though I've known you all my life Yes Sally Yes May I take you on that Moonlight horseback ride? Oh, yes, Henry Only we'll walk Gee, it really is beautiful here on the desert. Oh, I told you it would be, Henry. The air is so crisp and clean. Henry, don't you think you could take your overcoat off now? <laughs> I guess it's all right. I've got a top coat underneath. <laughs> and I do think, Henry, it, it's a little too warm for a muffler. Well, all right, I'll take a chance. But I want you to know, Sally, I won't take my overshoes off. That I won't do. Uh, shall we rest here, Henry? All right. Wait a minute until I put my coat on the ground. Sand may be damp. <laughs> there we are. I'll sit right here. Mm -hmm. Oh! What's the matter? Cactus. <laughs> oh, Henry, it, it, it's beautiful here, isn't it? Yes. Oh, I come here often. It's so peaceful. Do you come here when it rains? Certainly. Without an umbrella? Yes. You shouldn't do that. Scientists still haven't been able to isolate the cold germ. <laughs> Henry, is that all you can talk about? Germs? Oh, I don't mean to, Sally, but you can't be too careful when your health is concerned. <sighs> oh. Sally, is anything wrong? Oh, no, I, I just felt a slight chill. Uh oh. Uh, do you mind if I just come a little closer? Uh, well, I guess it's all right. Uh, <laughs> Henry. <laughs> Henry, tell me something about yourself. What you do, what your ambitions are. Well, as for what I do, I guess you wouldn't call it very romantic. I have a private income. But to be patriotic, I work in a gasoline station. <laughs> a gasoline station? Isn't that hard work, changing tires and repairing cars? Oh, I don't do that. I'm a specialist. A specialist? I just work on the gasoline pumps. <laughs> just, just last week, I was promoted. Did you get a raise? No, I didn't get a raise, but I was terrifically honored. What happened? They advanced me to the ethyl pump. Do you have a girl, Henry? I did have one once, but she left me for another fellow. Took me a couple of years to get over it. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Henry. Was it recently? No, it was quite a while ago. She was nine and I was 11. <laughs> but I seem to have met someone I like very much now. Oh? Yes, uh, it's you. Oh, Henry, that's awfully sweet of you. Sally, there's something I... Something I want to ask you. Yes? I... I've never asked a girl this before. Yes? Uh, uh, what time is it? It's 9.30, Henry. Why? Holy smoke, I forgot to take my liver pills. <laughs> Henry, for once, try not to take them. Maybe it is all mental. Try to think about something else. What? Well, you could think about me. Sally, I don't mind you getting so close, but you're crushing the cough drops in my pocket. <laughs> Oh, Henry, let me just come a little closer. There. Isn't that better? How do you feel now? I feel strange. <laughs> My heart is beating faster. Why, Henry, doesn't that mean anything to you? Yes, it does. I must take my digitalis. <laughs> Listen to my heart beating. See? I told you, my heart. Listen. Listen to my Listen to it. Henry, that isn't your heart. There's someone coming on horseback. Oh. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. So, there you are, you little runt. 
Thought you'd get away with hitting me with a monkey wrench when I wasn't looking. Mr. Davis, please. Not only that, but you stole my girl from me. Please, I'm not your girl. No, she's not. She's my girl. Why, you... I'm warning you, Mr. Davis. <laughs> temper, temper, temper. <laughs> I'm going to tear you inside out. Mr. Davis, you stop this. Put your hands up, Smith, because I'm going to let her right hand <laughs> fly at you right now. That will... Oh. Bob Davis, you beast. You knocked him out. Henry, Henry, speak to me. Say something. Oh. Oh. Where am I? He's delirious. Oh, I know. I'm on the air for old gold tonight. <laughs> I'm getting money. I'm getting laughs. I may even get cigarettes. <laughs> he is delirious. <laughs> Well, that's how it is. One minute you're up, next minute you're down, just like a Ferris wheel. <laughs> What's so funny, Bob Williams? Uh, well, I was just thinking, suppose you're taking a ride on a Ferris wheel and it stops working just when you're up on top. What's a fella gonna do then? I don't know. Suppose you tell us. Well, I know I wouldn't jump off. No, I'd just kind of relax and say to myself, Bob, why be irritated? Light an old gold. Because, smokers, that's one good time to get that grand extra flavor of an Old Gold, plus its special protection against cigarette dryness. Listen. Old Gold's blend of great tobaccos, including a touch of tasty Latakia tobacco, is conditioned with apple honey to help prevent cigarette dryness. So, for a better, keener, tastier smoke, light an Old Gold. Easier said than done, perhaps, since quantity is limited. And limited for these understandable reasons. First, Old Gold quality is held a full 24-carat standard. Second, our armed forces get first call on all cigarettes we make. Yet we're doing our best to assure your share of remaining Old Golds. So if you must take substitute brands today, remember, your dealer may have Old Golds tomorrow. Now back to Harold Lloyd and the third act of tonight's Old Gold Comedy Theater presentation, The Nervous Wreck, starring Jack Haley with Martha O'Driscoll. All right, Mr. Lloyd. The time is just one hour later, and in his hotel room sits a very battered, bruised, and black and blue Henry Smith. By his side, looking at him with sympathy, is Sally. Though Henry has been vanquished, as far as Sally is concerned, he is still her champion. She is trying her best to console him. Oh, Henry, you were magnificent. Magnificent. I didn't even get a chance to hit him. The first thing I knew, I saw a fist coming toward me, and that was all. Henry, it doesn't always matter whether you win or lose. It's the cause you were fighting for. I guess so. Would you please pass me the Arnica? There isn't any Arnica. That's funny. I had a bottle of it in my medicine kit. Well, then let me have the Mercurochrome. Henry, there isn't any Mercurochrome. I'm sure there is some. I know I bought some. Well, I know there's a mustard plaster, because I bought some last night. It's right next to the Dr. Scholl's corn plasters. You'll find them there. The... No, there isn't a mustard plaster either. You see, well, well, Henry, I threw away your medicine kit. You threw it away? With all my medicines and everything in it? Why well, I won't last 24 hours without it. I think you will. <laughs> Sally, if you really love me, give me back my medicine kit. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, well, well, I threw it down the well. Threw it down the well? Henry, darling, please believe me. All these ailments of yours are only imaginary. Never mind. When does the next bus leave? In about an hour. I have to pick up some new guests. Well, wait for me. I'm going to pack my suitcase and go with you. I'm leaving. Oh, but darling, I... My mind's made up. I'm sorry, Sally, but I'm going home to Mother. <laughs> Henry, have you found out what's wrong with the motor yet? Only that it stopped. I'm trying to fix it. I, I think a spark plug's missing. Here comes a car. I'll hail it. Oh, that looks like Bob Davis's car. Oh, if he catches me again, he'll murder me. I'm getting out of here. I think it's too late to run away, Henry. 
So you thought you could run away with my girl, eh? Well, my back was turned, eh? You want to get another beating, eh? Stop calling me A. <laughs> Bob Davis, you bully. You leave Henry alone. And put that gun down. Please, Mr. Davis, don't kill me. I wouldn't waste bullets on a mouse like you. I'll show you what I'm going to do with this gun. Oh, you shot one of my tires. <laughs> <laughs> there goes another one of my tires. <laughs> That's the fourth and last one of my tires. That's a very unpatriotic thing to do. <laughs> Tires are material of war. <laughs> temper, temper, temper. Stay away from me, you <laughs> runt. Temper, temper, you fool. Henry, Henry, you knocked him out again, and this time with your left hand. Did I? I mean, I did? <laughs> Mr. Davis, speak to me. Speak to me. Gosh, he doesn't answer. Sally, quick. We've got to get into his car. We've got to run away, fast. I just killed a man. I'm a murderer. <laughs> and that's what happened, Mom. There's a price on my head now. Do you realize what I've done? I've kidnapped a girl, I've stolen a car, and I've murdered a man. Well, there, there, Henry. Everything will be all right. Oh, but it won't, Mom. I can see it all now. Newspaper headlines. They'll throw me into jail. Probably for a murderer. Like me, they'll put me in a solitary cell. Solitary cell? That means I won't even get any sunshine. No vitamin D. That means malnutrition. I'll lose weight. I'll be so thin they won't be able to hang me. My head will slip right through the noose. Well, don't you worry now, son. We'll get the best lawyer in town. It's really all my fault. And all I did was want to help Henry. You see... I love him, Mother. And I love you, too. But I guess that's all off now. What girl would want to marry a murderer? Oh, it's the police, I guess. Let them in, Mother. There's no point in my hiding. All right, son. Your name's Smith. I'm Sheriff Hawkins. I know. Here are my wrists. You can handcuff me. I won't struggle. An old fellow named Bob Davis, don't you? Sheriff, please, please don't arrest Henry. He's innocent. He did it in self-defense. It's all my fault. I admit it all. I'm guilty of kidnapping, stealing a car, and murder. You're nuts. How dare you speak that way to my son? I just came here to tell your son that he's a hero. Hero? Yes. You knocked out Bob Davis. We've been trying to get him for years. He's one of the slickest hold-up men in the country. His real name is Charlie the Gap. <laughs> I just came here to give you a check for $5,000 as a reward. $5,000 reward? Yeah, that's right. Well, isn't he dead? No, very much alive and in jail where he belongs. Son, I want to shake your hand. Why, you're the bravest man I know. Any man who could single-handed and without a gun face a desperado like Bob Davis... It's not afraid of any living thing. Thank you, sir. That's all right. And I... I uh, <laughs> he sneezed on me. Quick, my atomizer. My atomizer. <laughs> well, so closes the story of the nervous wreck. Right now... Jack Haley and Martha Driscoll, our thanks to you for a most entertaining half hour. I enjoyed it, Harold. It was a pleasure. Uh, who's on the old gold roster next Sunday, Harold? We're very happy to welcome next week Judy Canova in Scattergrain. I'll be listening. <laughs> so will I. Thank you. Good night, folks. Until next Sunday. See you then. <laughs> Jack Haley appears through the courtesy of his radio sponsor's seal test. Martha O'Driscoll appears through the courtesy of Universal Pictures, producers of Salome, Where She Danced. And now until next Sunday evening, don't let little annoyances get you down. Why be irritated? Light an old gold. Its tobaccos are conditioned with apple honey to help guard against cigarette dryness and to give you more smoking pleasure. This is Bob Williams saying good night for Old Gold. This is the National Broadcasting Company.